gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings conference call of Sarah Sanitary Wear Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Vaswani of CDR India. Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Vaswani. Thank you, Zico. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us on the earnings call for Sera Sanitary Wear Limited for the Q1 FY24 earnings, which were announced yesterday. We have with us today the management team comprising Mr. Ayush Bagla, Executive Director, and Mr. Vikas Kotari, CFO of Sera Sanitary Wear. We will start with brief opening remarks from the management following which we will open the call for Q&A. A quick disclaimer before we begin. Some of the statements made in today's conference call may be forward-looking in nature, and a detailed note in this regard is contained in the results documents that have been shared with all of you earlier. I would now turn the call over to Mr. Ayush Bagla for his opening remarks. Good morning, everyone. The earnings for the quarter ended 30th June 2023 were adopted by the Board of Directors yesterday, 3rd August 2023. The earnings documents have been released to the stock exchanges. During the quarter, we witnessed encouraging demand for our products as the overall replacement demand remained positive. Sarah's product and design emphasis allows us to focus on the B2C segment where it can truly monetize its brand promise. Over the last two years, all efforts have borne fruit to decouple Sarah's revenue growth from fluctuations in interest rates and housing demand, thereby insulating it from real estate demand cyclicality. Despite the high base of last year, Q1 FY24 revenues are higher by 7.94% on a YOY basis. The gross margin increased from 53.7% in Q1 FY23 to 54.71% percent in Q1 FY24. EBITDA was higher by 38 percent as it increased from 61 crores to 84 crores. EBITDA margin increased from 15.4 percent in Q1 FY23 to 19.01 percent in Q1 FY24. Our stated objective was to increase annual EBITDA margins by 50 to 70 basis points each year. We have surpassed our stated objective as the increase in the EBITDA margins in FY23 has been more than 100 basis points despite advertising spend in the year increasing from 32 crores in FY22 to 57 crores in FY23. At present, our manufacturing facility continues to function at high utilization levels. During the quarter, the sanitary wear plant capacity utilization was at 100%. In Fawcett, where the capacity utilization was at 106% during Q1 FY24. The Fawcett Wear facility expansion program to take capacity to 4 lakh pieces per month is nearing completion and will begin enhanced production from August 23 in a staggered manner with full production expected by March 24. The cost of the project was 69 crores. With project management techniques, used to crunch costs, the completed cost will be close to 58 crores. The product mix planned is colored SKUs, quarter ton SKUs, PVD SKUs, and a few more SKUs that can be taken in from outsourced partners. This will enrich our product mix further. In Q1 FY23, China imports were 10 crores or 2.4% of sales. In Q1 FY24, China imports were 5 crores, 1.2% of sales. Sera was already one of the lowest users of products made in China, and with availability of manufacturing infrastructure in-house, the percentage of Chinese imports to sales has been continuously declining. In a business which is brand-driven, the fulcrum of success is manufacturing quality, plant efficiency, and new product-led growth. 
with regard to capacity expansion for manufacturing sanitary ware a fully aggregated land parcel in gujarat historically owned by a single owner is in due diligence we expect title documents to be executed and other approvals over the next 3 months during q1 fy24 no price hikes were undertaken our peer group companies increased prices in october november 2022 while sera did not during 2021 and 2022 three rounds of price hikes were undertaken by sera which were all a demonstration of pricing power currently we are capitalizing on the market share gained over the last two years top line increase and margin expansion are the current goals in sanitary ware well. raw materials like china clay went up by 18% and feldspar by 3% while plaster of paris and glaze went up by 2 and 3% in q1 fy24 as compared to q1 fy23 the zinc went down by 35% In faucet ware, brass prices went down by 7%, and zamac went down by 31% as compared to Q1 FY23. Despite changes in input costs, our increasing plant efficiency ensured improved gross margins in Q1 FY24 of 54.71% as against 53.7% in Q1 FY23. Due to availability of gas. from isolated wells near our plant the pricing of gas from gale continues to remain below market and will remain remain so in the future average gas prices have gone down from 35.97 per cubic meter in march 2023 to 29 per cubic meter in june 2023 normally gale supplies 50% of sera's gas needs However in Q1 F124 Gale provided 77% of the gas requirements of the sanitary ware business Sabarmati a JV of BPCL and GSPC pricing went down from 58 rupees per cubic meter in March 2023 to 46 per cubic meter in June 2023 supplying 23% of the gas needs for the plant the Q1 FY24 weighted average cost of gas is 34 rupees much lower than industry gas costs constitute 1.83% of sera's top line our focus on esg began in 1995 with installation of a wind energy facility capacity was added gradually and a solar plant was installed in 2014 During Q1 FY24, 94% of the energy needs of the two manufacturing facilities were met through in-house renewable energy sources. The retailer loyalty program was launched by Sera in Q1 FY23, which is now completed 15 months. More than 15,300 retailers have uploaded 1.85 lakh invoices. the feedback received from retailers has helped us in understanding the consumers changing demands geographical segmentation of skus and evolution of the rewards program to retailers besides standardizing invoices in q1 fy24 of the total retail sales of 245 crores more than 73 crores which is 30% of retail sales in sanitary ware and faucet ware has become eligible to receive rewards through this program after the success of the loyalty program a similar program was launched for plumbers across india sera has been conducting training workshops for many years now in parting installation and product knowledge to plumbers a new program where rewards are provided to plumbers who recommend and facilitate the sale of sera products is now active the program communications include program posters at retailers and dealer counters and a mix of communication channels which include sms phone calls program creatives and in person meetings by sales and marketing teams new product introduction is one of the important growth levers for sera During FY22, 
72 new products were launched. The average number of products launched historically used to be below 100. During FY23, 699 new products were launched. With the sharp pickup in new design and products launches in the last two years, a considerable amount of resources have been deployed at the manufacturing level and at the customer experience level. During Q1 FY24, substantial efforts have been made to ensure that products launched in the last 24 months penetrate deeper into the dealer network and in consumer buying decisions. This is very similar to the route adopted by most FMCG companies. Our highest ever advertising spend was in FY23 of 57 crores at 3% of sales. The budgeted publicity spend for FY24 is expected to be 65 crores at similar percentage of sales. Sarah's share of voice was lower than its share of market. And with the increase in advertising expense, the share of voice is getting closer to its share of market. Publicity spends, which were 11.75 crores in Q1 FY23, are now 11.02 crores in Q1 FY24. Population centers of 17 lakhs and above, which are Tier 1 cities, constitute 33% of sales. Population centers of 3 lakhs to 17 lakhs are Tier 2 cities with 22% of sales. Centers with populations below 3 lakhs are Tier 3 cities with 45% of sales. We can go over the financials. Revenue from operations in Q1 FY24 were 427 crores versus 396 crores in Q1 FY23, an increase of 8%. EBITDA, excluding other income, was 68 crores in Q1 FY24 versus 61 crores in Q1 FY23, an increase of 11%. The gross margin was at 54.71% in Q1 FY24 against 53.7% in Q1 FY23. Profit after tax was 56 crores in Q1 FY24 versus 40 crores in Q1 FY23, an increase of 40% UYOY. EPS for Q1 for financial year 24 was 43.35 versus 30.47 in Q1 FY23. For Q1 FY24, 53% of the top line was from sanitary wear, 35% from faucet wear, tiles represented 11% and wellness 1%. On a YOY basis, sanitary wear revenues registered an increase of 7%, faucet wear revenues increased by 8%, tiles increased by 11%, and wellness increased by 22%. The sanitary wear and faucet wear verticals remain the bedrock of business with contribution of 88% to our overall revenues. The classification of overall sales in Q1 FY24 was 45% in the premium category, 31% in the mid category, and 24% in the entry category. Inventory days in Q1 FY24 was 74 days compared to 73 days in Q1 FY23. Receivable days in Q1 FY24 were 28 days versus 26 days in Q1 F1 23. Payable days in Q1 FY24 were 30 days against 39 days in Q1 of FY23. Therefore, net working capital days in Q1 FY24 were 72 days versus 60 days in Q1 of FY23. In this quarter, the availability of product ensured there was no element of lost sales. This is the ninth straight quarter with no element of lost sales. In the current year, the CapEx budget other than the brownfield faucet wear expansion and the proposed greenfield sanitary wear expansion programs is at 35 crores, of which 5 crores were spent in Q1 FY24. As on 30th June, 
2023 are cash and cash equivalent stood at 755 crores against 566 crores as on 30th June 2022, registering an increase of 189 crores or 33%. Positive cash flow for Q1 FY24 has been 54 crores as compared to 48 crores YOY. In conclusion, I would like to say that due to the combination of internal factors, product throughput maximization, brand salience, design differentiation, as well as the macros of home improvement, Sera would be able to monetize all the growth drivers that present themselves. I would now request the moderator to open up the line for Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star N1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star N2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Archana Gude from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Congress on good set of numbers. I have two, three questions. Uh, so in the opening remark, you said that 699 new products were introduced and now the efforts will be on getting the deeper penetration of these products. So can you help us understand if we should expect the similar trajectory of these new products for coming years? And also, is it possible to give some color in terms of uh, the new products launched by our key competitors? So thank you for the question. Um, normally, we would launch between 75 to 100 products every year. Last year, we launched 699, so 700 products were launched last year. Now, making 700 products part of the consumer psyche, then part of dealer displays, dealer promotions, and manufacturing those 700 new designs with completely different functionality and design aesthetics is a you know whole mammoth exercise that is currently going on. So this will occupy, I think, all of this year, which is why in this quarter we chose not to launch a single product. Now, in the past, you know that the industry has an average of 10 to 12 percent of sales from new products. That number for Sarah has historically been 22 to 24 percent. Last year, in some quarters, it was 36 percent. In some quarters, it was 39 percent. So this quarter, this number is around 29 percent for Sarah. So the, our, almost one third of our revenues are revenues which we did not have earlier. So new products are responsible for that. and. In most cases, you will find that new products are coming in with higher functionality and design aesthetics at higher price points. So whatever margin movement you are seeing is all because of product mix changes. And that will be the focus for the next medium term for the company. Keep changing the product mix. Now, in any case, our faucet wear number of products has crossed 1,000 products. And sanitary wear, I can give you the exact number of products for both sanitary wear and faucet wear. Uh, in sanitary wear, we are 1,584 products. Whereas in, uh, in sanitary wear, we have 572 products. In faucet wear, we have 1,584 products. So keeping this kind of uh, product portfolio and there's plenty of opportunities to upsize the consumer to higher price points. So that's where the focus is. Right, right. Got it, sir. Uh, and sir, my second question is, what is Sera's role while assisting channel partners to build the brand stores and uh, uh, how many number of brand stores currently we have across uh, like style galleries and hub and uh, uh, tile galleries, Sera tile centers, etc. So we have three, four formats currently. One is, uh, you know, 7,000 to 15,000 square feet company-owned format. We have eight of those on, in large cities and centers where we have large sales. Then we have uh, around 1,500 and 1,000 square feet uh, 
model which is dealer owned and dealer managed where Kera, Sera is not really part of the OPEX or CAPEX, we have 184 of those. Okay. And then we have a retailer model. Some are shop in shop, some are exclusive, some are multi brand. We have 781. Mm -hmm. So the the aim is to double these 184 and 781 over the next three to four years, and Sorry. we are also toying with various models. You know, hybrid model, uh, then 1500 square feet and above model. There are plenty of models that we are toying with. Correct. And so, lastly, uh, how much uh, expenses should we expect for the three uh, company-owned style studios as Bangalore, Morbi, and Chandigarh? See, for the dealer-owned, dealer-managed, there is no capex or opex from Sera, nor is it for the retailer-owned, retailer-managed. For the company-owned, in bulk of the cases, the real estate is not bought anymore. It is all leased. So it is just the maintenance cost and, of course, the rental, electricity cost, sales people cost, technicians, and the rental. So that is all part in the part of the PNL. There is no real capex involved. Sure, the so fitums are sure. less than uh, one and a half to crores per store. Okay, got it. Sure, sir. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Praveen Sai from Prabhudas Leeladar. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. The first question is uh, related to the growth uh, in the sanitary and the faucet wear. Uh, this quarter, we had uh, uh, given a single digit of a growth. So, way forward, uh, also the guidance is of uh, uh, 17 to 19%. So, next nine months, are you expecting, uh, you know, the higher than 20% of a growth? And uh, uh, from where, actually, you are expecting such kind of a growth? So, if you look at the uh, Q1 numbers, uh, the growth percentage looks at uh, 8%. But the absolute number is still 50 crores. Last year's Q1 has had a high base effect because it was a 74% increase from FY21, FY22. Uh, as far as growing 17 to 19% annually, we said that from 1440 will become 2900 crores by September 25. That goal remains intact. And there might be some seasonality effect in some quarter. That is why we don't give out a Q on Q guidance or even annual guidance. But this year's annual guidance, last year we grew by 25%. This year, even if we grow by 20%, it will mean, you know, adding uh, 360 crores of sales. So it will all equalize at the end. In any case, you'll find that Q3 and Q4 are about 60, 62% of sales each year. Okay. And also in the opening remark, you said about the replacement demand were very strong. So how much is, uh, how much that contributes to your revenue? And uh, uh, the way forward also, you are expecting a very strong growth. And can you give some numbers to that as well? Currently, both the project demand and replacement demand are very, very strong. And we resist the temptation to take on a significant portion of uh, project demand because that results in change in the margin profile. So I can give you some numbers as well. Project demand was about 35% of sales and replacement demand was about 65% of sales. Now, Going forward, uh, there's no, you know, thinking to really change this ratio because that impacts the margin profile. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So this is a historically level. Uh, Sixty-five percent is a replacement for you, and you wanted to continue with this, right, sir? Right. But I'll tell you why this is important. In periods where there is a surge of project demand, this ratio can change. But to be able to resist that surge in project demand. It's very difficult, but we don't fall prey to any of those, uh, you know, sudden market trends. We make sure that a 65% you know, hovers around 60 to 65%.
Okay, okay, that's a helpful, sir. And can you quantify the numbers for advertisement expense for this quarter and the last year, the same quarter? This quarter, um, FY23 was 11.02 crores. Last year was 11.74 crores. Okay, sir. And also, can you give the capex uh, uh, for a brownfield and the greenfield for this year and the next year? So, capex uh, for faucetware, which was year marked at 69 crores, is now completed at 58 crores. And that started in July 22, will get completed in August 23. In addition to that, there is a uh, capex uh, in a current facilities and in customer touch points all totaling 35 crores for FY24. The breakup of that is sanitary wear automation 11 crores, faucet wear automation 4 crores, customer touch points 8 crores and land and building in and around the current manufacturing facilities of 8 crores, logistics and IT 4 crores. In addition to all of these, the sanitary by greenfield plant where the land will cost around 25 crores, the manufacturing facility, civil work, plant and machinery will cost, will cost another 105 crores. So it will be a 130 crore project. And some part of that will come in this financial year? The land portion. Oh, okay. I have some more questions. I will come in a queue, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Deeresh Patak from White Oak Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so you are mentioning uh, 780 uh, dealer-owned, dealer-managed, and then, uh, sorry, retailer-owned, retailer-managed, and then 180 dealer-owned, dealer-managed, and then few company-owned, company-operated. So all that adds up to a few thousand. So the total retail touch points would be more than this, right? So or they are just thousand touch points. You know, these are the large format, dedicated, where you can see some huge amount of Sera pending, large, uh, you know, LED displays, dedicated corners, shop-in shops, that is a retailer format. In the dealer, it is, a, in most cases, a exclusive. So a dealer who is uh, uh, making the kind of investment for 1,000 or 1,500 square feet, in most cases, more than 95% you will find, there are exclusive Sarah dealers. And this is a huge working capital um, investment by them as well because they have to give credits to large and medium-sized customers. They buy from Sarah on cash and carry. So for them, the financial commitment, the OPEX is very, very high. In a normal dealer who has a 1,500 or 1,000 square feet display area would be servicing anything between 30 to 60 retailers, which we are not even counting. Mm -hmm. Because these would be hardware stores and many other types of stores that, I mean, there's no way for us to keep a track other than through this retailer loyalty program. Our financial okay. transaction ends with the invoicing on the dealer and getting paid, which is why this whole retailer loyalty program was launched to begin with. We want to understanding, understand the pricing relationship between the retailer and the dealer, the kind of SKUs that are moving, velocity of sales, all of that. And in our model, we want to have the dealer with as close to zero inventory as possible, which is why we have these 19 distributed warehouses across the country with a large number of SKUs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these 184 uh, dealer-owned, dealer-managed, so these, they have these uh, showrooms as well as they manage the retailer relationship also. Like you said, each dealer will have 30 to 60 retail touch points. So they do dual, uh, right? That's right. And in fact, uh, these dealers have a very large infrastructure of three-wheelers, four-wheelers, own warehouses, salespeople. 
bank bank lines and dedicated customers they are they also have the ability to bundle sanitary ware and faucet ware with many other things maybe construction chemicals plywood sometimes even cement understood how much what was the you gave us spend on ad spends what was the spend on loyalty programs last year so the loyalty program will be the annual cost will be below 18 crore that was the retailer loyalty program the plumber loyalty program which has just been launched that cost i think we'll get to know in 6 to 9 months from now because there are lot of tweaks that take place along the way okay retailer loyalty program has been running for how many years one year it's just completed 15 months okay. one more question uh, the top you know just to understand you mentioned lot of sku's and products you have in both faucet and sanitary ware but just to understand the sku the top 10 20 sku's in let's say faucet as well as sanitary ware they would contribute what percentage of that uh, category's revenue see that we analyze but we don't really give out because that would be sharing a lot of data with the peer group and that list in any case changes very rapidly with introduction of new products okay but is it fairly fragmented or is it skewed in very very fragmented. very fragmented very fragmented in fact consumer demand is such for similar looking skus higher priced skus are moving faster Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Udit Gachiwala from AS Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking up my question. So, firstly, could you give us a split of what is our outsourced and in-house manufacturing for this quarter for both sanitary and faucet? For sanitary ware for this quarter, outsourcing. constituted 59% of sales manufacturing at our own plant was 41% of sales for faucet ware it was 50 and 50 outsourcing and 50 own manufacturing if you want to compare that for, uh, to the whole year last year fy23 in sanitary ware outsourcing was also 59% of sales and own manufacturing 41 in faucet ware outsourcing was 52% of sales and own manufacturing 48 got it sir this was helpful and the secondly when we look at the new sanitary ware plant if we uh, are able to complete the land acquisition in this fiscal uh, by when can we expect the plant you know to start commercial and what is the capacity size that you all have in mind for as of now see the expectation is the land uh, formalities could be completed uh, sometime in q2 or q3 and then uh, that will set the zero date and initial production will be 18 months from uh, zero date the full production will be 24 months from zero date the uh, you know there's no point discussing a rated capacity of even if i say it's a rated capacity of 12 lakh units per year it doesn't mean anything because that number will change dramatically depending on the kind of sku you made on the country Okay, but uh, do we expect a similar 3.5 to 4 times asset turn for the set capacity? I'll just give you the exact number. Based on the current uh, estimates, uh, the new sanitary ware plant at a cost of let's say 130 crores will have asset turns of close to 2.5 times, and the faucet ware plant at a cost of At 69 crores, the asset turns were 3.5 times. Now that we have completed at 58 crores, the asset times will increase further. Okay. So, sir, just lastly, this new sanitary ware plant, though it is in proximity to our current uh, uh, land, but there we will not get the gas advantage that we are getting from here, right? but there are other you know many other options that are being looked at besides that typical natural gas okay okay understood and gas in any case is now a very small portion of manufacturing costs as we are upsizing the rsk use and going higher in the value chain 
you know these individual rm costs are declining in percentage noted got it sir thank you for the thank you sir thank you our next question is from the line of omkar kugare from shri investments please go ahead yeah in the commentary you mentioned that the premium category is uh, constitutes around 45% right hello 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 am i audible hello 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 am i audible hello hello our next question is from the line of asim from dam capital advisors please go ahead yeah hi ayush uh, just one question on future growth uh of the 17 to 19% expectation in the near term rather the next two years fair to say that faucet wear should be the key driver for growth since sanitary wear is running at full utilization and you have been moving up the value chain in house for a while so sanitary wear growth would be flat like would flat line or be sub 10% in the near term see manufacturing capacity is not the best determinant of uh, top line growth simply because the products that are made in house that list changes uh, dynamically and products that are given to outsource partners are also change dynamically so availability of capacity from outsource partners is always there for low end products and you know we provide a lot of training and qc to our outsource partners depending on that that list can be modified so whether the plant at one point you know last quarter and the quarter before that was running at 115% as well currently it's running at 100% but there is enough flexibility to change the product mix within the plant so manufacturing is not a constraint which is why you know as we've been sharing with each other that the optimum inventory level has to be maintained in a distributed manner so we have distributed our availability of products across the country which is why the 70 plus days of inventory is the correct number so this is the ninth straight quarter with zero loss of sales of any sk with full availability so i take your point faucet wear will grow much faster because the faucet wear industry is double the size of the sanitary wear industry and the theme of you know unorganized to organized has not fully played out in the faucet wear business only half the 11000 or 12000 crore market is currently organized so that theme is also playing out at a very rapid pace so the percentage growth in faucet wear will be higher than sanitary wear but is still 33% of our business versus 52 53 being sanitary wear so it has some catching up to do and sanitary wear will also be growing at the same time but uh... and any hint of a number for sanitary wear growth also so i appreciate i'm sure everyone appreciates what you've done despite utilization being peak for quite a while in terms of growth i just want to know uh, how much more can the growth be strong enough before your capacity new capacity actually hits it so adding that 17 to 19% growth you know which uh, when we said that uh, two years ago it seemed like a difficult task to most people who know the company but we delivered in the last two years even this year is possible adding 17 to 19% will be 340 to 350 crores of sales sure got it and just last question 
any comments on the tiles business growth even though it's a smaller business now how would that grow from year on so tiles is now a fully outsourced business with no real assets on our books other than maybe some receivables we are operating almost at a zero inventory model it is now 10.5% of sales this quarter the number was 44 crores Uh, for FY23, the entire year number was 190 crores. So, I mean, it's a independent business, and we view it only as a complementary business to sanitary ware, faucet ware, and as a trading business. So, it has its own P&L, etc., its own sales channels, which are sometimes different from sanitary ware and faucet ware. So, there is no real, you know, emphasis to grow that business, given that there is such a significant. overhang of over capacity in that industry and your prices sometimes soften but one more thing i just wanted to highlight about tiles our soluble salt tiles which was a fully commoditized business is now only 4% of sales and gvt which is the industry standard and also the most profitable portion of the business has grown by 29% over last year then a double charge full body which is also a very profitable tile segment has grown by 41% so the emphasis is to go upsizing again in design in slabs and in um, full body and in gvt rather than the soluble salt or wall tiles which are more commoditized and more pricing driven Thank you, sir. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Asim. May we request you to rejoin the question queue for follow-up questions, as there are several participants waiting for their turn. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Akash Shah from UTI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Um, hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes please. Sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Ayush. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, if we look at, uh, uh, I don't know whether my uh, data is correct, but uh, actually, brass prices have corrected. So, uh, uh, by about five uh, percent uh, uh, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, uh, or let's say nine percent uh, on a QoQ basis. So. Uh, any thoughts? Uh, are we planning to increase discount or let's say uh, uh, how is the competition uh, behaving? Uh, so I'll just give you some color on all raw material. Uh, on um, a YOY basis, brass has gone down by seven percent, and Zamac, which is another key raw material ingredient in the handles of single lever tile, uh, single lever faucets. has gone down by 31% but pricing at the mrp level or at the dealer lending level has not changed so you will find in our history that there's never really been a instance where mrps or dealer lending change sometimes when there are slow moving items there are combo offers with sanitary ware or with other slow moving items and fast moving items to liquidate the stock that's about it but at the same time in sanitary ware bulk of the raw materials have moved up so china clay which is a key raw material has moved up 18% feldspar 3% color and glaze 2 and 3% zinc which is one of the very small constituents of rm has moved down 35% so in the basket of both you will find sanitary ware and faucet ware are sold together most of the time in the basket of both there has not been an any meaningful or material change um sure so so we are not uh, sort of increasing discount i mean we are uh, broadly uh, keeping the price safe see increasing discount for a brand like sera is never really an option because the brand is so strong and increasing discount is a you know desperate attempt by newer enter entrants in the business those increased discounts may or may not reach the ultimate consumer so here in this company we would like to talk to the ultimate consumer which is why you also seeing many companies which you know operated behind the wall in the pipes or pvc pipes business have not really been successful in sanitary ware and faucet ware because they are talking to civil contractors civil engineers and plumbers whereas sera 
would speak to the consumers directly. This is a completely different business model. Right. Sure. And uh, uh, my second question is, uh, so in Fawcett, uh, now that uh, we have uh, commenced the brownfield uh, uh, capacity, uh, how much, uh, I mean, uh, do you uh, think that uh, we will see a significant decline in outsourcing and there will be significant increase in own manufacturing in Fawcettware business? There might be a slight decline in outsourcing, but we expect sales to pick up in a manner that the ratio may or may not change and it's not really anything that uh, makes a difference to profitability. We will continue to outsource lower end products. So 1.25 lakh pieces of lower end products which were outsourced, we don't expect to make those in-house because they really don't complement our skill set and technologies. So, so uh, uh, do you uh, foresee enough demand that uh, we will be able to ramp up capacity uh, very soon or do you see uh, that uh, the ramp up of the uh, capacity will take some time? To give you an example, we were producing 1.5 lakh units of faucet were in our facility till September 21. Now we are at 3 lakhs. That yes. 3 lakhs is now fully absorbed. Similarly, 3 lakhs is going to 4 lakhs. That 4 lakhs will get absorbed with no changes to that 1.25 lakh outsourcing number. And, sure. you know, these are all uh, that pink gold, then black matte, which is all sought after by the new consumer. So these PVD SKUs, yellow gold, pink gold, the pricing is much higher than the typical chrome products. But their demand is also much higher. So we are addressing a completely different market now. Thank you, sir. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Akasha. May we request you to return the question queue for follow-up questions? Sure, thank sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next question is from the line of Omkar Gugardar from Shri Investments. Please go ahead. Mr. Omkar, your line has been unmuted. You can go ahead with your question. request Mr. Umkar to unmute your line from your side. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, my question was regarding the 45% premium category uh, men which you mentioned in the commentary. I just wanted to know how has been the trend for this in the last 3-4 years? From what percentage it has moved to 45%? And what has been the, what will be the trend you assume for that? We, we can, of course, make a trend chart and share it with all shareholders and investors and analysts. But this number has been increasing for two, three reasons. First of all, bulk of the new product introductions have been at the mid and premium end of the business, at higher price points. And with higher degree of design difficulty, now that is one of the barriers to entry. So for a brand like Sarah, higher design aesthetics and design difficulty provides higher realization. So that's, you know, something that is exclusive to us. If you look at our catalog, it's on the website. You'll find a lot of new design in faucet wear, sanitary wear. In sanitary wear, you'll find a lot of non-cavity based straight line products, whether it's floor standing WCs or uh, wall hung WCs or thin rim sinks. These are the products that are selling well at dramatically higher price points. So right from, you know, engineering, R&D, manufacturing, then educating the sales force, dealers, how to push, how to explain the benefits to the consumer. This is a whole new, you know, process, which is why you're seeing the increase in share of premium products. Okay, just can you just uh, quantify in terms of number for this? Just a ballpark number, not exact figure. How that I'll have to make for the last few okay. years, and then I'll have to share it with everybody so that everyone has access to the same information. Okay, but the trend has been rising, and you would see that continuing, right? That's right. Okay, uh, the second question is on the pricing front. As you mentioned, there was no price hike, but the competition increased the price. So this is because you earlier had a price hike. At that time, they didn't 
uh, hike the price or what was it like? So I'll give you some background on our price hikes. Uh, our last price hike was in May 2022 of 3% in sanitary wear and 5% in faucet wear. Before that was November 21, also a gap of about 8 months. 10% in sanitary wear, 5.5% in faucet wear. So you are seeing that our price hikes are lower than inflation. At the same time, the margins are moving up. Top line is moving up. Because our plant efficiency is uh, making up for any increase in inflation, which includes includes RM inflation, wage inflation, electricity or gas costs. So I cannot comment about other competitors and their manufacturing efficiency, but you know, like I've been saying a number of times, the fulcrum of this business is manufacturing efficiency. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time and fairness to all participants, may we request participants to limit their questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mohit Agrawal from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Your line has been unmuted. You can go to <coughs> Hello, am I audible? Yes. Sir. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so, Ayush, I had two questions. So, one is on the 17 to 19 percent guidance, uh, uh, revenue guidance, the growth guidance. Uh, now, what is the uh, price growth assumption that you are, you are taking? So, is or is it entirely due to value mix and uh, volume growth? See, last year it was entirely uh, mixed change because the last price hike was negligible of 3% in sanitary wear in May 2022. This year we've gone through almost 15 months with no change in price. So, I mean, I wouldn't like to speculate about the future and the pricing decisions that are taken by the sales and marketing team going forward. But it's best to assume that this 17 to 19% will be half mix and volume and half inflation led. Okay, understood. And quickly, you, you mentioned in one of the previous questions, uh, answer to a previous question, that uh, the new entrants have not been, you know, so successful because of their focus on B2B. Uh, so is it fair to conclude that the competitive, uh, the competitive intensity has not at all changed on ground, uh, especially considering that you have 35% de uh, demand coming from project business also? Uh, or is it limited to some some specific segments or SKU? So could you give some color on that? See, the uh, competitive intensity between the four or five large players has been very high for the last, uh, let's say, 15, 20 years. That has not changed. But newer entrants who may have been successful in other businesses, they have found this industry very difficult because the consumer who's installing a product worth 10,000 or 15,000 and the consumer is going to use it for the next 10 years, does not want to experiment with brands. That is why there is a huge element of repeat businesses in sanitary wear and faucet wear. And at the same time, if any company comes from a B2B orientation, they cannot succeed in this business. So in that respect, it is not really a building material business, more a FMCG business where you're speaking directly to the consumer and explaining the design and other differentiation of your product. That is the only thing that will sell. Second thing is warranties. You see, in Fawcett, why did Sarah suddenly become, in less than 10 years, the second largest player? Because we started offering a 15-year warranty. No one else was able to pierce a 10-year warranty for a faucet. This is a 15-year full replacement warranty for the main forged brass piece in the faucet. And finally, you know, newer companies that come in, they outsource their uh, after-sales service to third-party contractors. Serra has more than 400 technicians on its own roles, which visit customers in any part of the country 
within 24 to 48 hours of receiving a call. That is again a huge differentiator because our technicians are, their KRAs are totally linked to customer satisfaction, whereas a third party contractor is more inclined to try and sell some spares or charge for the visit, thereby leaving behind a more disgruntled customer. Sure, understood. Thanks a lot. Those were my questions. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Anil from Smith Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I wish. Uh, congratulations on consistent performance. I have just one question. Uh, in FY23 uh, annual report, I saw a bad date of 5.5 crore rupees. Can you please tell us, uh, I mean, what was it on account of? This is in the normal course of business. You know, we uh, just take, in, take a hit of any kind of receivables beyond a certain date. So any receivables where the you know the dealer has not been cooperating or the sales field staff gives us feedback that this there's not going to be repeat business and whatever outstanding that remains should be written off we take a write off and even our auditors have defined certain parameters so based on that and you know you saw the number last year on 1800 crores a five crore write off on receivables not happening is a very negligible number first second. We have the lowest receivable days in the industry and the highest percentage of cash and carry sales. So no, our it, was not, it was not there, uh, you know, year before. That's why I was wondering, I mean, uh, so this must be some uh, something to do with project business, right? Because retail to anyway will be cash and carry, right? And the retail delinquencies are on the dealer. They are not really related to the company. Hmm. Only dealer delinquencies are on the company. And for the portion that is not cash and carry. But individual accounts would be 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh. So within the 5 crores, if you see the composition, no single number would be more than a couple of lakhs. Got it. And secondly, you retain your target, right? 2900 crore by September 25. That's right. Okay. That's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Lalit Kumar from LKR Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Anish. Anish, what is the possible market share which we have currently? Again, uh, you know, giving a number is uh, very speculative because there is no third-party authenticated report. But we are the second largest player after the market leader. And uh, our market share is in double digits. And a share of incremental market share is one and a half times our current market share because we are capturing a significant portion of the growth of the faucet market. So, if for uh, just for illustration purposes, if our market share is 10, 11 percent, our incremental market share would be 16, 17 percent. Got it. And what the cash balance and inventory base you had mentioned currently? Uh, your voice was a little muffled. Uh, what is the cash balance and the inventory days you right. had mentioned? Right, right, right. I'll just give you that number. Inventory days are 74 days, and the cash balance increased from 566 crores to 755 crores. Okay, so what is the plan? Do we have a, a much better utilization plan for reduction of our working capital days? From 72 to 60, given that you know we are at 100 percent capacity both in sanitary wear and faucet. The 12-day uh, increase that you are seeing in working capital days is primarily because of the nine-day decrease in payable days. So payable days, uh, you know, many companies have 70 days and 75 days as payable days. Sarah has traditionally have a very low payable day because we keep it aligned to our receivable day, which is now between 26 and 27. Got it. And on the CapEx, how much is the internal accrual and how much is going to be the debt? There will be zero debt taken. And in fact, uh, even this cash balance, all best attempts will be not to touch the cash balance, but to finance all CapEx from that quarter's operating cash flow. 
So this quarter we had 58 crores of operating cash flow. Uh, additional, I mean, this year we'll definitely have close to 250 crores of operating cash flow, which is much more than the capex on any financial year. Uh, and the last question you had mentioned uh, for this capex, the asset turn being 2.5 times. So uh, I think you are giving what a conservative uh, project number, uh, given that we are already on a blended asset turn of 3.4, 3.5 times. No, no, I'll give you a, uh, the exact number for financial year 22-23. Asset turns was six times. No, no, uh, for the capex, capex one. Yes, yes. Uh, for uh, capex for the faucetware project, which at 69 crores the asset turns was 3.5. So at 58 crores that number will be four or higher More than times. that. Correct. So sanitary where we are only estimating that based on 128 crores the asset turns are 2.34 times. Okay. But that number will dramatically change once we get the final product mix and selling price, which is, you know, no point to finalizing a product mix for a plant that is more than 18 months away. Well, got it. Okay, best wishes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone for attending this call and for showing interest in Sarah Sanitary Wear Limited. Sarah remains positive that the strong positioning in the industry, improving macros, will help it deliver steady and consistent growth going forward. Should you feel any further clarification or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to reach out to me or CDR India. Thank you once again for taking time to join the call and see you all next quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Sarah Sanitary Wear Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.